Um, another question from the from Benin. Seven skies, or seven heavens, are mentioned in the Holy Quran. Up to which heaven or sky have the astronauts managed to to to, to get? The question is framed because of a misunderstanding how the verse is mentioned or referred to. The seven is a perfect number and is a repeatable number. That is why there are always seven days to a week because it repeats itself. And amazingly, it's a proof of the truth of religion as such. All over the world, wherever there is a divine religion, it speaks of weeks as seven days and the beginning of the creation as seven, beginning of the seven days period. <coughs> the seventh day, Allah rests, whatever the rest means, but He does rest on the seventh day and the whole process is completed in seven days. Now, look at the history of mankind. Even those people who have not followed any religion, right from the times immemorial, all over the world, the weeks are divided into seven days. Why? It's fantastic. So, this is the proof of truth of some realities, which are ancient realities, which are in fact uh, religious realities, not just human realities. And you cannot break their ties with the religion. Despite the fact that the influence of those religions who mention these realities is not found at all to have traveled to all over the world and uh, impress the people in framing their lives. Even before the religions, such religions are born, much before. Look at the history of mankind. We, we find, uh, we, trace, we can trace it back to much beyond Adam and Eve. And yet the day, weeks are seven, seven day weeks. In Australia, look at that. Weeks are always seven day weeks. So this means it's a perfect number. And it also repeat, it means that it repeats itself one week after another, another, another. So when Allah speaks of seven heavens, I believe they are repeatable numbers. And seven heavens can be divided within one heaven into seven tiers, like we can do to the, our own atmosphere and the atmosphere closest to the earth and then higher and then higher, the stratosphere, all the spheres around can be divided into seven. So it does not mean that every, all over the world, all over the universe there's just seven. There are millions of galaxies which may further be split into sevens. Each galaxy has many worlds of its own, many universes of its own. Each could be divided into sevens. So it becomes an interminable number. Those who do not understand the philosophy of seven, they think there's one, two, three, four, five, seven, and just that. And if that is that, if the universe is to, divide, to be divided only in seven parts, then nobody has ever reached even the first sky. Because seven divided by 18 billion to seven or thereabout would be about three. Some people say the universe is aged 20 billion. So around three billion light years or let's call it two and a half billion light years, would be the expanse of one heaven then. Two and a half billion light years, which means 
that if light travels from one end of that heaven to the other end of that heaven, it would take 2.5 billion light years. <coughs> it's a staggering figure which I'm telling you. Man cannot move faster than light. Nothing can move faster than light. Man, man cannot, cannot move even 1,000 parts or maybe 100,000 parts of the speed of light. All that we hear of is in one hour the rockets cover 25,000 miles or a little beyond. Right? In, in one hour so far man can move at a speed of 25,000 miles per hour or a little beyond. Now in one hour, how many seconds there are? And for each second, the light travels 186,000 miles. Each second, the light travels 186,000 miles. Now imagine, in the, in the one second of the light, 186,000 miles, how much time my man, man would require to travel? And how many seconds there would be in one year? So what light travels in one year, is a distance which is impossible for man to recover, to cover in all his lifetime. Multiply the seconds of one year by 186,000 miles and then realize if man ever since its creation had been traveling towards so-called heavens, at the speed at which man is now possible to travel, that is 25,000 miles per hour. If man had started the moment it was born, moving towards heaven, the distance is covered, the distance covered by light in one year will not as yet be covered by man. You understand? One year means all the years split into seconds and every second turns into 186,000 miles. Now work backward and try how much man can cover, move towards the heavens. And incidentally, how much Jesus Christ might have done to reach the fourth heaven. So we somewhere here in the vicinity, you know, you can call him if you could. <laughs> so the universe is fantastic, is a fantastic thing. Man is too small to claim anything big or high. So the first heaven, as you said, can never be reached, it's impossible, but only infinitesimally small measure of that heaven could have been reached by man if he had started moving towards it. Still he would be within one light year. And the first heaven extends as, we, as I calculated to be at least 2.5 thousand, no, 2.5 yeah. billion light years. Staggering, isn't it? Yes. But so it's difficult to tell the common people how staggering it is. They have no idea of mathematics. They know, have no idea of speed of light and this and that. So I have just broken it down into small fragments of one year. Out of 2.5 billion light years, right? Mm -hmm. 